So mm. let's get into our main topic, Kyle. Not quite securities, or are they? The Board Ape Yacht Club. Mm. For those of you who maybe not have heard about it, Kyle, want to break it down? Yeah, so we've got two pieces here, right? The This comes on the heels of the current event that just happened, where you have Yuga Labs, Y-U-G-A, Labs, which is the company that behind the Board Ape NFT collection, they just raised at a nearly five billion dollar valuation from Andreessen Horowitz. They raised mil- you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to do that, and so this was starting to make everybody think, okay, well, who is Yuga Labs? Well, it's it's really just a couple of guys that maybe is now a bigger team at this point that has facilitated the issuance of these Board Ape NFTs, but. We've started to see on the other side, Hester Pierce has talked about the growing skepticism from the SEC around if NFTs themselves are securities. And so now Yuga Labs is selling their own actual securities, which are the investment in the company. And they also are selling products that are generating them revenue, which could potentially be securities. So we're really going to start to untangle that whole mess today. Yeah, you know, this is eerie a little bit for those who were around in 2017, 2018, when ICOs themselves started to get attention from the regulators and shortly afterwards starting to get a lot of enforcement actions. I mean, they started flying at projects left and right, and it created this feeling that no one was safe. And right now, NFTs feel pretty safe. We haven't seen the SEC step in, but as Kyle pointed out, there is this potential issue. And so with this rise of issuers like Yuga Labs, as Kyle mentioned, issuing these NFT collections Are they just art or are they something more when you start to add all these variety of different perks and you have a variety of different potential shareholders if you start to fractionalize? Things get very interesting, but let's back up. We've got the Board Ape Yacht Club, which actually ended up becoming one of the most highly traded, if not the most highly traded NFT collection in history today. It is a series of 10,000 different Board Apes. They all have their own unique characters. And if you own it, As part of owning the token, you also have the IP rights behind that board ape. So let me give you an example. Someone who owns these board apes actually teamed up with Universal, and Universal Group is now announcing a whole new rock band, a new band that's in the metaverse. It's going to be creating their own music, and the characters are not individuals, no humans, no Justin Bieber's here. We're talking about board apes being the stars of this band. And so that is the potential use case of how you can use your IP, right? Because now you can sell music, now you've got characters, merch, all kinds of stuff. So the ability for you to use your board ape and create value thanks to these IP rights, that's definitely a big deal. And that's part of their value. And that's why people want to buy them beyond also, of course, status symbol. Uh, The fact that you own one is a big deal because it is the rarest collection within the NFT world. And more importantly, you do get to participate in the community of Board 8 members, which does have all kinds of perks, right, Kyle? Yeah, and and so I think you made a great point about the value of the NFT. I think the next logical question is, okay, well, if Yuga Labs is selling these NFTs and the NFT owner has the intellectual property, how can the company be valued at $5 billion? That seems what are ridiculous, they but it actually makes a little more sense than you might think. And so here's where Yuga Labs makes their money. It's in two different places. It's in the primary issuance of the NFT, and it's in the secondary trading of the NFT. These are terms that we use here on the Security Token Show all the time, which maybe is why the SEC is starting to think about it a little bit. But either way, the primary sales when they actually allow you to mint the NFT and create it out of random, out of thin air, is when the collection first comes to market. And they actually make a ton of money on that because it's essentially like the cost of seniorage, if you know about economics, where for them, minting it is very cheap. It's just the gas fees that they pass through to the person, but then they charge them one Ethereum or two Ethereum or five or 10 or 20 to actually have the right to mint one. So they get to pocket essentially that whole thing, which covers the cost of the designers and all these different things that that you know they had obviously to make it, but... Long story short, they made $100 million on the Mutant Ape Yacht Club, which is their offshoot of the Board Apes. It was a second kind of issuance that they did earlier this year. And they made $100 million just on minting alone from that that collection, which is like 5,000 or 15,000 total or something. I don't remember exactly the number, but either way, $100 million on that one alone. They also have the Board Ape Kennel Club, which is another funny offshoot. And then of course, the Board Apes themselves, and they were originally minted. So that's where they can make money from there, as well as the secondary trading. Board Apes take 2.5% of 
of every transaction, which has totaled over, I think it was $100 million on that one as well, in secondary transactions for Bored Apes, Mutant Apes, and Kennel Club. So if you take their total revenue over the last 12 months, you're actually really looking at almost $200 plus million dollars in revenue, which when you apply a 50x revenue multiple to it, you're starting to get to these crazy valuations. It doesn't seem that crazy if you think that Bored Apes are going to continue to trade or continue to go up in valuation, as well as to launch additional assets like the, the you know, yeah, subsequent if you collections. you aren't familiar with all this, currently the, the lowest price, they call it a floor price, for one of these uh, Bored Apes is trading at around $300,000, 100 ETH. Uh, you know, if you put the math together, 10,000 in the collection, that's almost a $3 billion market cap is sitting at right now. That is pretty crazy. But of mm. course, why is it less than $5 billion? Because, as Kyle pointed out, future issuances, more secondary trading because there's more value behind them. Suddenly, the company does $500 million in revenue the following year solely because of the demand and the growth behind the project. And so now Yuga Labs has a real interest in making these NFTs uh, actual huge success. And so let's go back to our securities laws, our Howey test. You know, this is where both Hester Pierce as well as the commissioner of the SEC, uh, chairman, I should say, they're both commissioners. So you got two of the five commissioners saying, hey, NFTs could potentially be securities. And why? Because one, there needs to be an investment. Well, in this case, you are purchasing, as Kyle pointed out, they made $100 million from people purchasing these NFTs. This could be seen as an investment when people are expecting some kind of a return. You're getting IP rights. You might be getting more airdrops. There's rumor that they're going to be launching now a utility token behind the community as well. So there's additional value there. It's a third party doing and those now, things. Exactly. So value. that's where we get to. And now the one of the second prongs of this is the fact that there is a third party making you a return of your value. Right. It's not you. It's not what you have. It's actually, in this case, it seems like Yuga Labs might have a vested interest in making sure that your NFT that you've purchased is indeed valuable. And finally, they're promoting this. There's efforts that this is one of these things that there's one another one of the things that the SEC looks at, the fact that, okay, this starts to look a lot like a business. And when it uh, walks like a duck and looks like a duck <laughs> and quacks like a duck, that's where people start to say it probably is a duck. And that's where they're is a potential possibility, a potential case that the board ape NFTs are indeed securities. Yeah, Gensler really said it exactly the same way, except in a, a succinct way recently that he just said, basically, if an investor expects profits based off the promoter's efforts, then it may fall under SEC jurisdiction. So if you're buying these things and Yuga Labs is raising hundreds of millions of dollars to build out this ecosystem of board apes, which should create more value for the board ape holders, it does start to make you wonder, what, you know, where are these lines, right? Whether board apes are securities or not, there do need to be lines here that are need to be drawn because we're seeing fractional NFTs, right? Where you're buying a share of an NFT. So now you don't actually own the NFT, you don't get the art, you don't get the community, you just get an investment share. That starts to feel like it's an investment, maybe it's a security. You've got real estate deeds that are in NFTs, right? Where you own a house by owning this NFT. That doesn't feel like art. That feels like an investment a little bit. Some cryptocurrency, or if not almost all of it, according to Gensler, could potentially be securities as well. Or you've got staking protocols like we saw with Coinbase getting their Wells notice, BlockFi having some investigations and others where they're allowing you to get a significant return for staking your cryptocurrencies, and the SEC has said they're not quite sure how they feel about that either. So there's a lot of these different pieces and components that start to feel like traditional securities actions, and we need to figure out what's allowed and what's not. That's right. That gray area continues to you know, plague the crypto industry here, but point in case of this main topic, NFTs. They could indeed be securities. The SEC could start going after them. And we just made the case with Board Ape for you. So hopefully you learned something. That's why we're going to try to keep getting you back every week, every Monday. We've got all of the latest news and updates for you from the industry. So definitely like and subscribe. We appreciate the love and support. You can reach out to Kyle and I. We're available on Twitter, on LinkedIn. We love comments, suggestions, feedback, questions. And of course, we would love to see you again next week. Subscribe to the What's Drippin' newsletter. Do it all. You can find us everywhere. Happy tokenizing.